Hey everybody, it's Martin at Flick and Feathers again today, and I'm tying another pike musky fly. Um, and I'm sure it would work for striped bass and stuff as well. It's just a surface howitzer uh, articulated popper. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who'd like to support the channel directly and be eligible for uh, future giveaways, and also the Amazon links for anybody who would care to um, bookmark them and use them for their Amazon shopping, it'll help support the channel as well. So, I'm starting with a 28mm uh, articulated shank, this is the big game shank, it's the flyman shank. Um, I'm just going to run on some GSP thread, close the loops. And get a wee bit of super glue. <clears throat> you could add a wiggle tail, but um, I would suggest that you don't need the articulated shank if you're going to do that. I would put the tail very far behind the front hook. So First thing I'm tying in is some bucktail. And I'm not um, reverse tying it. Right, with the surface poppers I actually quite like to, or these hooked poppers anyway, I quite like to keep them sort of long and slim, or slimmer. So I'm just going to tie it about halfway along the shank. Coming back. Just make sure it's all the way around, which it is. And then I'm just going to tie down, tie everything up, and then I'll come in. And trim these waste pieces away. So I've got a nice neat head. I mean there's still some flare but not a huge amount. And then I'll just tidy everything up. And again, it is a predator fly so but a super glue. Does no harm. Next I'm going to get some of this stuff, this is Big Fly Fibre, it's this from Silver Skills Fly Fishing. It's a nice, it's like a more, it's like a softer version of Kinky Fibre or something, it's just really nice, you get the kind of rippled fibre to get the volume, but it's uh, a lot softer, easier to work with, more, more mobile. And I want that to be a bit longer than the bucktail, which actually looks not bad if I tie it in 50-50, so I'll just taper the ends. Take away any excess glue. And then I'm just going to offer this in and let it wrap around the shank. And fold it back. And you don't need a huge amount, you know, you just need enough to get that nice veiling effect. I'll come in and uh, fold that back, cover it up. Take my clip and just get everything held back out of the way. And now for the flash, I've got some magnum flash above here. And the 
flat white. I like these. I like these matte colours quite a lot. Um, and I'll just take one strand of uh, red holographic. As you know, I like these. I like these flat hot um, colours because the if you look at a lot of conventional lures, they're not actually that flashy. They're um, you know, like kind of they're bright maybe. The soft plastics and the like, but they're not flashy at all. Just a, a bright neon colour, solid colour or striped colour. So I've got my I don't know, half a dozen strands of white here, you know, one strand of red. Again, I've just got to make sure the ends are tapered. Got to offer this in so it's longer. And that's 60 40 split, something like that, 70 30. The ratio is not that crucial as long as it's as long as you're getting the length you're happy with. And same as before, fold it, tie down over the top. Right? That way it's never going to pull out. Make sure it's nice and spread. Then I'll turn it over and I'll just do the same. Get it a bit longer than the the, the big fish big fish fibre. Fold everything back. Make sure you've got a nice spread distribution of the fibres. That's pretty nice. Yep, just got to grab a couple of bits of lateral scale. Don't know that you need it, but it does no harm. Just tying them on e either side so there's just that bit of flash, but Minimal. Well, minimal for a pipe fly, I suppose. Same again, just fold everything back, and that way it can never pull out, it's got to break. And now we're starting to get somewhere now. Now, just the Add a wee bit here. I'm just going to use the white ripple ice fibre. And you don't need a huge amount, it's just enough as sort of round off this head. And I'll use it to sort of smooth out the transition between the, the two the articulated section and the, the, the front hook. There we go, catch that and tie it off. Nice neat head. You know, even though it's a big fly and it's an articulation point, you might as well have it kind of tidy. Super glue over those wraps. There you go. That's that. Now, for the articulation, I'm using quite a light wire because there's no hook in the back here. Um, normally, I'd use about forty pound, but the there's no need to use the heavy stuff when you've got the. It's not coming under any pressure, really. You're only doing enough to, to hold it. So, I've got myself about seven inches or so of uh, wire. Just got to thread it onto the the 
shank here. I'm just going to pull it to sort of put a wee crease in it. Then I'll feed my two beads on together. Um, it's up to you how you do this. I know some people like to do it one at a time, tie in one leg and all that, but I just double it like that. So there's what we've got. The gap's about a bead width between the, shank, the, the back loop here, then I've got my two beads, then my shank. So for my hook, I'm using a Partridge Universal Predator X, size 6-0. Just the vase. I'm going to put a wee lick of super glue along the shank and then just batter on some thread. size this so that the the beads will, the beads will come round beyond the bend right when I tie it in because I'm going to put a rattle on and you need space for the rattle so I want something like that so that the thread can come around and secure that so just catch that in that looks a bit good and I'm taking tight wraps here but you don't need to go mad. You can see I've come around the bend there. That's actually a wee bit long. So, I've just got to go back. You can always adjust, right? You don't need to just accept it because it's... tight in. It's just a sixteenth or so too long. That's better. Like I say, round the bend, just to drop this slightly and get it out of the way of the the uh, the rattle. Now, again, as as there's nothing, you know, that's, this is not going to be pulled holding any weight, so I just snip that away. Starting to look quite nice. We'll just clip this back to kind of keep things controlled. So, I'm going to take another wee bunch of this ripple ice fibre, which is really nice stuff. Um, it's maybe a slightly heavier bunch than the last time. And just use this to sort of cover and secure this articulation. Just hide that a wee bit. That will still articulate. You know, this isn't a, doesn't have any strength to it. It's just uh, this material. I mean. It's, it's soft, it's mobile. The weight of that shank and the movement of the flies, it's going to be plenty to move it. New bit of glue. Back. 
and secure plenty of wraps right get that that well locked in again more glue right just got to cover everything here because I'm just going to leave a wee space um, between the rattle and the bucktail just add a bit more glue there. Right, this is this is just a plastic jig rattle. Um, you can buy them from any tackle shop, really. Better, they're better than the Pyrex. The Pyrex rattles are they rattle well enough, but they break. Um, the plastic ones seem to be a bit more durable. So again, a bit more bucktail. with them out but a decent a decent bunch you just touch it it takes away any excess but make sure you don't stick your fingers together just got to offer this up now the, the rattle will cause you a bit of sort of disruption but it's it's fine don't worry too much about it it will be lost in the over the, the whole fly. Let's make sure good coverage. Feel nice and tight. That will flare it slightly. Now, it's quite important when you're tying here. I've left. There's my tie in, and there's the rattle. So there's. 7 mil, right, quarter inch between these two, right, that's, the, the scissor blade tips are the gap, if you see that, right, um, if you tie back your bucktail will stick up against the, the, the rattle and it will, it will really ruin the profile, I'm just going to wind this forward, as before, get a nice, neat collar and then trim away my waist. Again, get some of this big, big fish fibre. I cannot see that, big fish fibre. Sparse bunch, don't need a lot. Now this one can be a bit shorter than the stuff before, so I'll just take an inch off of it. Did a wee bit more than that. sure the ends are uneven and I'm going to bring this so that it's coming back like halfway into the the rear section right that's and that's plenty you could actually make it a bit shorter if you wish but it's up to yourself fold it back pretty good and I'm just going to do the same with the flash of boo as I did before half a dozen white I'll cut it in half Cut 
couple of red this time. Got loads. So that side. <clears throat> Two in each bunch. So this time I've just got an extra strand of red which will double it up to four rather than two. And then we'll just offer it in. Same thing, uneven ends. And I'll let that come back a similar amount, right? So I'll offer it in on my side. Make sure I've covered about 180 degrees of the shank. Again, it's at a 60-40 split. Fold it back. And then tie it down. And then on my offside, same thing. Try and get some good coverage here. Fold it back. And then tidy everything up. Just check my popper head. That's not bad, I've got just about enough room for my dubbing loop. Once I tie in my uh, lateral scale. Put four strands this time. I mean, you're trying to beef up the front compared to the back, right? So. Increasing everything slightly starts to give you that nice taper in the fly. Right, and then we're going to make a dubbing loop. Sure it's nice and closed. Put it to the side like this, over the vice, and just got to super glue all those thread wraps, right? I didn't super glue it every tie-in because it was actually just tying in exactly in the same spot, so I'm quite happy just to let it have one coat and let it soak through. Which it will do as I make this loop. Right. Clip. Now, I like to wax my loops just to provide a bit of grip at the spinning stage. Right. It's not really doing anything once the fly's tied, it's just at this point that it's, it's helping you out. I'm going to take some of this. This is a ghost here from Sibai. It's a, a translucent flash. I've got a big bunch here. I'm going to take about a third of it out. I'm going to fold it in half and cut it. So that's half the length. I'll set that right in the middle of the bunch. So I've got a big. Uh, Sort of variation in size, and I've got some a bit of density in the core. I'll put it in the loop. 
and I'll close my loop and just carefully spread this stuff out. You can keep it back from the you can keep it back from the hook. You don't need to worry too much about getting it right in. You can lose the thread in the in the when you're winding it. That looks pretty good, so I'm going to start twisting this. And you want to go s slowly with these fibres whenever you're making like a flash loop like this. Nice and slow to help prevent it tangling. See, there's a twist that they come through. Just push that up a wee bit just to get it going. And you'll see it starting to turn, and then it'll start to almost as though it's got to snarl up in itself. So I'll just stop and get my bodkin, and I'll come in. And I'll get these fibres that are wrapping up here. If you pull them loose now, uh, you'll have less tangles later, and you'll get a, you'll get a much better result. So I'm just spinning round here. I'm just going to ease it around the thread. Free it up a bit. Make sure that you freed up as much as you can. Don't pull too hard, um, but try and get it free. And then we'll spin it up again. I mean, it's got to be tight enough to hold. It's a bit time consuming this process, but it's, it's you get a very nice effect, it's well worth it. In my opinion. And it's, they're fairly durable, these flies as well. You know, you've, you're have you gluing at every stage and the the soft the soft flash and that, it moves, it sort of moves away from the teeth a lot of the time, um, rather than getting cut, which is a boon. Some of that's tangling up, so I'm just, just getting the, the, the bodkin in and pulling it free. At this stage it can be a bit rougher because I know it's starting to get a grip on the thread. And if I just check, I just I could pull that. That's that's fine. Then I'm going to just sweep it and pinch it to crease the the fibers. I sweep it down, so I've got like a doubled hackle almost. Right, and it's all on the same side. Uh, there's a couple of, that's a wee bit long for my taste, so I'm just going to come in before I tie it and just feather that away. There we go, that's nice. Oops, missed a bit. If you, if you do it before you wind it, it's, if you cut it before you wind it's much easier to, to uh, trim it with it ruining the whole fly. So we've got to wind this on the spot. And then build a nice like collar. Try and notice catch any fibres and building up that red. I'm trying to get a bit of volume here as well. And now when I'm at the end of my loop. I'll come across my thread, take two or three wraps down the way, and then 
fold it back and tie over it. And that's it locked securely in, in place. Now it looks a bit of a mess, but you just come in and make sure that you free as much as you can the fibres. If you use your scissor blade, it will cut any that are trapped too tightly to um, pull free easily and then you won't get them all curling up. If you try to pull them free with a bodkin, they'll end up curling up like a phone cable. A pigtail, I suppose. And that's basically the tying done. Just uh, check that head, that looks quite good. So this is just a Flyman Howitzer head, I've coloured it red and I've stuck on flat tape eyes. Um, these are actually slightly too big, um, but because they're flat tape eyes you can get away with it. I'm going to coat the head with uh, liquid fusion anyway. So they won't, you know, they'll not be able to pop off or anything. But that flat eye actually works quite well. And I feel like the sizing on the eyes is wrong on these flyman heads anyway. Um, even their own eyes that are supposed to be the size on the that's on the packet. I often feel they're a wee bit, they're just a shade too big for the, the hole, so... I don't think it's that big a deal. If you go slightly over to make it sort of more keep it more in keeping with the size of the, the whole fly. I mean this fly is eight inches or so, nine inches long maybe. Um, so the big eyes are, are what I go for. I'm just gonna use some gel super glue and I'm going to put a a generous blob at the front here and I've made a hole and I'll, I've used my tube fly needle to widen it to help prevent it popping the bursting the foam at the front when I push it on like this now it will be quite a hard head to get on at first but once you start it and you can get it just twist it and just keep it moving and then you can set it on the head like that perfectly and there you go that's your articulated how it's a popper the last thing I would do is I would coat it with uh, coat the popper head with liquid fusion and stick it in the drying wheel but um, I don't think I need to film that I've done it in other videos and it's quite time consuming so there you go there's the I hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel and share the video. Tight lines guys, bye!